That question for you, Charlie. Should Lee Anderson apologise for what he said? Um, well, I think he, he probably should, but he should probably just apologise for the facts, which is, I think it's a fact to say that, you know, Sadiq Khan is not controlled by Islamists. I think that's something that was probably a bit clumsy. So I think he should probably Making it personal that. about Sadiq Khan, the London mayor. It, it, exactly. But I think he should have the opportunity also to explain what he meant, because there he is... He has had the opportunity. He can tweet, he can do any... I mean, he can come on this show any time he wants. Oh, he could. Um, well, we should invite him on. Um, but uh, he, um, uh, I think he, he should, A, apologise, but then also explain what he actually meant by, by, by what he was trying to say, which I think is there a sentiment... There is a sentiment out there about what he was trying to say. Here's what I take on this. I think the debate about this is being controlled itself by the editing of the interview that he did and the words he actually said. I'm going to play you a very short clip right now of that interview on, yes, our rival channel, GB News, Lee Anderson talking about Sadiq Khan. Listen very, very closely, and in particular, to a couple of words at the very end of what he had to say, which have mysteriously vanished from every other clip that I've seen played out on media. Let's have a watch and a listen to what Lee Anderson had to say. He's, uh, he seems to be letting the, uh, not only the Jewish population down, but the old population of London and Britain as a whole. And I heard the comments here, I heard the comments earlier you was making about Suella, some of the comments she made earlier this week. And I don't actually believe that these Islamists have got control of our country, but what I do believe is they've got control of Khan and they've got control of London and they've got control of Storm as well. They've got control of Starmer as well. Charlie, your face tells a picture. Mm. I, I didn't realise until this morning, when I found that full clip, that that is what he said. This was all about his comments about Steve Khan and the argument being, white, let's be honest, let's, let's boil it down. White Tory criticises Muslim mayor of London for being, in control, being controlled by Islamists. Well, also, white Tory criticises white Labour leader of being in control of being in the control of Islamist extremists. That paints a completely different picture, does it? Because it wasn't just aimed at Sadiq Khan, although most of those comments were about it. He was saying that in control of, 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 the, of the London mayor, in control of, of, of London, and in control, in, the, in control of the Labour leader as well, and would be next prime minister of this country. Um, I think that's right, and I had not seen that full clip. I wonder why said. that's been edited out. I wonder. Uh, Anyone? I think I think it paints a whole um, a different light, as you were saying, on that because it is now uh, the the argument has been stoked up. You know, the tensions have increased because uh, of the the religious religious aspect, because of the uh, the mayor himself, as you were just rightly saying. Uh, you know, as a Muslim, uh, and so I think um, uh, that is a whole new light on the situation. But I think um, it is still incorrect to say that even Sakir Starmer. Yep. being controlled by Islamists, which is why... And that's where I agree. I, do, I don't think they are being controlled uh, either, either man, mm. and that's where I think the, mm. the comments were wrong. Are they Islamophobic? Are they anti-Muslim? He was being very specific about two people who are elected representatives. Even if we just focus on Sadiq Khan, he's elected with them. We are entitled to criticise Sadiq Khan regardless of his religion. It is a fair point that on the very day that Lee Anderson made these remarks, and everyone was criticising them, that that very evening on Saturday, Tower Bridge, you know, one of the, you know, re, you know one of the most visible representations of our capital city of our great country, was taken over by a mob of extremists um, waving Palestinian flags, letting off, you know, smoke bombs and flares and the like, um, and the police did nothing to move them on. As of, I believe this morning, no arrests have been made. Even though, if I leave my bins out, I'm going to face a, okay, civil, not a criminal issue, but I'm, I'm, I'm blocking the pavement, I'd be in trouble with my local council. But maybe you could just block an entire bridge. We've seen this with the climate protesters over the years as well, and I work, I live in North London, I, I work in South London, I'm very aware when bridges are closed down, it brings London to a halt. Um, so every single Saturday, we have these pro-Palestinian marches organised by groups, many of whom have close links to Hamas terror leadership in Qatar. Um, we have London Bridge, so, so Tower Bridge in London closed down for hours on end. We have people making, doing protests outside Parliament where uh, MPs are afraid to, to, about how they're going to vote. We have procedure in Parliament, we are told, changed by Sir Lindsay Hoyle, under pressure, we understand, via Labour leadership because of this threat. I mean, are we not allowed to talk about it? 
And that goes to the heart of what I think Lee Anderson was trying to say, because of all of those examples that you've just given, uh, including the uh, projection of uh, the uh, yes. incitement of hate from the river to the sea, uh, broadcast not just on any old public building, but on Parliament, and you're seeing it there uh, on your screens now. You know, this is something that incites uh, um, a division uh, that increases tension amongst particular communities. This is something that the Mayor of London has absolute responsibility for and the Metropolitan yeah. Police. We have free speech in this country, that's why we're one of the best countries in the world. But if it becomes hate speech and if it becomes uh, inciting of sort of division, then that's when you need politicians to step up and act. And if you don't call things out for what they are, things like things that we've talked about yeah. before, like the Rochdale grooming gangs, for example, because of cultural differences, because of yeah. religious differences, whatever it is, whatever the example is, we need to be able to talk about these things, yeah. which is why I think there is a lot of sentiment shared with what Lee was yeah. trying to say. Although I don't like the term hate speech because then that's me, me saying that, you know, a, a trans woman isn't a woman is, is, is hate speech and into this, under these edicts. So I don't like that. Um, it, if it's against the law, it should be called mm. out and it is against the law to, to, to incite mm. religious or, or, or racial hatred. Um, so you think, I mean, I think what Lee Anderson said kind of, I think he couched it in unhelpful terms. I think he was probably inaccurate. However, it is a matter of fact that these marches go ahead, the police don't do anything, even at the time, they don't arrest people. People, they deface, you know, war memorials and like, people are not arrested at the time, sometimes later, and then we see a little slap on the hand from a judge when someone has a picture of people paragliding in on the back of their jacket at a, at a march, uh, basically celebrating the slaughter of innocent people at a music festival in, in Israel. I mean, you know, what does that tell you? Um, completely against the law, but a slap on the hand nevertheless. When, when Sadiq Khan is not just London Mayor, but the Police and Crime Commissioner, he's able, to, he's able to decide the priorities of policing. He does not, it appeared, think that it is a priority to make sure that Jewish people in this city feel safe walking the streets on, on Saturdays. Um, he doesn't feel this. It's a fair criticism for any elected representative of any party to make of Sadiq Khan, is it not? Uh, definitely. And I think that's why, you know, just a couple of days before, Suella Brathman, former Home Secretary, yep. who's been very vocal about those protests and very vocal about the failures of Sadiq Khan um, uh, in, 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 in that context. So, of course, it's a fair criticism. Um, uh, entirely so. Uh, and rightly so. Um, but it is just that wording of, you know, being in control of yeah. or being controlled by Islamists, which is why I think that, that sort of why that language matters. Yeah. And, and the, the trouble is when we end up talking about the language, I do worry that we, that's where we, we kind of miss the point. So to summarise, here's, here's my take on all of this. Lee Anderson wasn't just criticising Sadiq Khan, he was also criticising Keir Starmer. But for some bizarre reason, all of the media clips of what Lee Anderson had to say don't include him saying that he was also criticising Keir Starmer, saying he was also in, uh, being controlled by Islamists. Do I think that is actually the case? No, I don't think Sadiq Khan or Keir Starmer are actually controlled by Islamists. Do I think they are influenced by the threats that they pose? Absolutely. And you know how I know they are? Because even I am influenced by the threats. Because I'm afraid, as any right-thinking person should be, of the threats of extremists of any sort. Because we know what extremists do. We've seen it on our streets. Westminster terror attack, two terror attacks at London Bridge, and numerous other terror attacks at Manchester Arena. I mean, Lee Rigby. Do you, do you want any more to prove my point? Three MPs needing bodyguards in the House of Commons, the entire procedure of the House of Commons last Wednesday being changed because of threats uh, to the safety of MPs if they vote, in quotes, the wrong way. Every Saturday, Jewish people basically saying to their kids, don't go into central London because there's a hate march on and you will not be safe. Tower Bridge on Saturday night being closed down uh, by a mob uh, calling for a change in our, uh, our, our foreign affairs policy in the relation to a ceasefire for Gaza. And if they don't get what they want, what will they do? And that's the issue. Anyone can protest. Anyone is entitled to peacefully protest for any policy change they want in this country. But they're not entitled to break the, break the law. And they're definitely not entitled to threaten people. And when we have a lot of conversations about, oh, someone shouldn't have said this and didn't like that language, are we not missing the point of the actual threats that are being posed? And who is posing those threats? Because last time I looked, it wasn't Buddhists or evangelical Christians or, I don't know, Scientologists. It was extremist Islamists. And no, I don't mean the four million Muslims who live in this country side by side with everyone of other faiths and no faiths like me. I mean a sizable, but a sizable minority 
of people in this country who are signed up to a political ideology that wishes us ill. And that is a threat, not just to individuals and their safety, not just to MPs, but to you and to me at a pop concert, on a bridge, on the train, on the bus, anywhere. To a teacher wanting to teach his children about the Prophet Muhammad and the Charlie Hebdo cartoons in Batley. They are a threat to our way of life to our democracy, to our freedom of speech, to our freedom to do anything in this country. And when we talk about the semantics of what a Tory backbench MP says or doesn't say about uh, elected representative, we are completely missing the point. And this is just what happened after Sir David Amos, the Tory MP who was brutally murdered in 2021 by an Islamic extremist. This is exactly what happened after his death, because Parliament then had a whole day of debating about how hurty tweets were responsible on social media. No. No, extremist Islam was responsible for the death of that MP. And now the political and media debate is, well, did Lee Anderson say the right words? Is the Tory party more concerned with this, uh, anti-Semitism than Islamophobia? And, and should Sir Lindsay Hoyle survive as Speaker of the Commons? Totally ignoring the elephant that's not just in the room, it's on the streets, it's on our public transport, it's in, it's in uh, uh, sports and music arenas, it is everywhere. And it is the threat of Islamist extremism. And anyone who doesn't think that threat exists day in, day out in this country as a clear and present danger has got their head in the sand. And it's high time our politicians stopped the pearl clutching about what one politician said and how he said it about any particular other politician and actually talked about the real issue that we are facing in this country. Because if you're not talking about the right problem, you're not going to come up with the right solution.